So just last week, I visited the Cross Crossroads exhibition at the San Jose Art Museum, which shows pastoral life and industrialization intersecting in the early 20th century. But what, what happens when art isn't this easy to understand? Here today to transform your perspective on modern art, please welcome freshman Kelly Liu. This installation by Joseph Kasuth illustrates a chair in three manners. An image, a physical object, and a definition. He challenged the pre-existing ideas of art by assembling items he didn't necessarily make himself. In sixth grade, I was first introduced to the whole prospect of conceptual art by a Cooper Union student at summer camp. Conceptual art is essentially the idea that the technical skills displayed by a piece are as important as the ideas that the piece encompasses. And for the first time, new artists and ideas are almost being thrown at me, diversifying my still very limited perspectives on the art world. Jim Sanborn's projections display unreadable code. Cryptos, his installation, which stands outside of the CIA, to this day is not fully decoded. Jenny Holzer's truisms, statements obviously true, are inserted into life in many ways, from t-shirts to LED displays. She aims to highlight social injustice issues. Wenda Goose, the United Nations installations, incorporate hairs donated by one million people across the globe to achieve the idea of internationalism and ultimately global harmony. In his project Forest of Stone Steeles, he translates poetry from the Tang Dynasty to English and back, showing the untranslatable nature among cultures. On Kawara created time-based art, where each piece displays the date of its creation, each hand-painted and therefore unique, showing the passage of time. Their dates are written in the language of the area he was in, and if Kawar didn't finish a piece before midnight, he would destroy it. His art, in a sense, ended when he passed. This was the first class I took where students didn't come into critiques with drawings or sketches. Instead, they came in with handmade contraptions, large scale collages, weird but compelling videos, strange costumes, everything imaginable. My peers would draw with tea, have conversations with the homeless, go outside to burn pieces of newspaper with their glasses, construct unconventional books, all for a purpose, all revolving around a central idea. And this is, whatever, this is what forever shifted my view of art and artist. As a child, it seems as though we're almost taught that a realistic piece is something we should strive for, that a good piece is almost synonymous to a realistic one. This is what initially made conceptual art so difficult for me to understand, as I've seen many instances of parents, of teachers, of peers heavily praising realistic works. I only saw one side of art. I thought art had to resemble the forms of paintings, photographs, or prints. Never had I seen an installation at such large scales with such powerful meanings. In my experiences alone, I've seen many opposing views on modern and contemporary art. My extracurricular art teacher stresses beauty in many of these pieces. On one occasion, he gave us several hours to imitate the flowering apple tree by Mondrian, not only to stress its difficulty to master, but to almost prove its beauty through certain art principles. Contrarily, my former literature teacher related the themes of Fahrenheit 451 to how bad art has become. He proceeded in showing us traditional oil paintings from the encyclopedia comparing these to the works of Mondrian and Pollock. But many of us give up easily, and instead of forming interpretations of our own, we often accept the judgment of others. Just last summer, I paid a visit to the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art with my family. My father wasn't extremely interested in any of the pieces on display. He even proposed waiting for us outside of the museum or at the museum cafe. Now, I wondered why my dad, who would ponder, and I mean ponder over pieces at other museums, paid so little interest to these works. At the museum itself, I've seen many opposed other opinions on these pieces. There were visitors who would stand planted in front of certain works in awe over long periods of time. Those that would skim through the pieces, leaving just enough time to see everything on display. Those who would constantly question the values of the work presented to them. The list is endless. 
these outlooks stem down, not solely to our artistic tastes, but also to our educational backgrounds, in terms of quality and not of quantity. Back in kindergarten, I went to art class, like many of my peers, where we sat behind our desks and imitated our teachers every stroke. Needless to say, we almost all ended up with identical drawings, aside from the curvature of our lines or our color choices. Not long after, I switched to a different teacher who had an entirely different approach, an approach that included critiques, discussions, and overall freedom. This education I received through the interaction between my peers was more valuable than any technical skills I've gained through the process. And this is not the education in the sense of color theory or composition, but the creative way I've almost been trained to take. I am grateful enough as to spend hours at the studio weekly and many, many, many more over the summer. And when given a prompt, I learned to attack the idea at different angles in ways I've not seen taken before. I truly believe creativity is heavily connected with the bravery in enduring something new. This could mean intentionally breaking the rules of perspective on your paper or something entirely different. This has led me to accept the unconventional and ultimately the ideas behind conceptual art. We often immediately connect creativity with the arts, but there are many differing forms of our education, some that don't ignite personal ideas, such as that I partook in in my earlier years of elementary school. We should also note that these creative methods are achievable through many educational faucets, not limited to art, and we should strive to incorporate them. For example, I was engaged in competitive mathematics for a while, and Though the mindset needed for math and art may seem entirely different at first, I found many overlapping similarities. At school, my classmates and I were structurally led through examples that we soon imitated for problems not much different. But whether this be at an online AMC course or a math council one in person, the problems are left open-ended. We were merely taught concepts that we would have to then incorporate into challenging problems in a creative way. Again, pure interaction and the process in solving problems actually strengthened my foundation that may not have been hammered in step by step. Just last week, I was absolutely confused as to how to do a long and quite intimidating physics problem. I literally sat at my desk for an hour trying to relate concepts I had just learned to the problem at hand. After accepting defeat, I went to talk to my dad, who after a few minutes related one simple concept and solved the problem. He asked me why I couldn't solve it by myself as I knew all the information necessary. And I responded by saying that I hadn't seen anything like the problem before. What stuck out to me was his response. What happened to creativity? Um, I do believe creativity can be developed or even taught. At a young age, I would draw and draw and draw, but I found it difficult to incorporate my ideas in a creative manner like so many of my older peers had done. As I progressed my technique, I continued trying to think of ideas. And after watching others develop their thoughts, reading about more artists and their views, and going to museums, I began to build up inspiration. And apart from sketchbooks, for assignments, I started carrying a smaller one around for personal notes, observations, quick sketches, and a place to put my ideas. I bring this with me on vacations, hikes, and occasionally to school in case I want to add a little note for later. My most recent sketchbook is handmade. This outlet has helped me spread out my ideas. Seeing others in their creative endeavors has sparked creativity in myself. Creativity is built up through the exposure to many views, many ideas, many methods, and many solutions. Creativity is innovation. It's problem solving. It's possibility. As a society, we should work to encourage collaborative efforts to achieve a creative mind, as education at a young age heavily affects future thinking processes. Instead of often resorting to individualized and quantifiable tasks whenever possible, we should encourage interaction. Let's build up and not get rid of creativity before we enter the real world. Over these years, I've learned that art needs to be new. It needs to be different. There needs to be change. Marcel Duchamp is an artist of radical intents. He took common but symbolic objects coined ready-mades and regarded them as artworks. He said, an ordinary object 
could be elevated to the dignity of a piece of art by the mere choice of an artist. Anything is art if an artist says it is. He argued. You cannot define electricity. The same can be said of art. It's an inner type of current in a human being, or one which needs no definition. Thank you.